An American singer-songwriter, Mary Chapin Carpenter, is an artist who has won five Grammys throughout her career, making a name for herself in country music whilst exploring genres of folk, pop and rock. Her emotional, heartfelt lyrics and music created a connection with the audience that allowed her to sell 15 million albums worldwide. Mary Chapin Carpenter was born on February 21st, 1958, and her life began in Princeton, New Jersey. She spent a couple of years living in Japan before her family settled down in Washington, D.C. As she grew up, she was exposed to different music, the likes of the Beatles, Judy Garland, and the Mamas and Papas around the house, while Carpenter herself listened to Led Zeppelin and the Rolling Stones. Her mother learned the guitar during the folk era of the 60s and was Carpenter's first introduction to songwriting when her mother gave her a guitar. During her teens, Carpenter's parents divorced and inspired her to desire to write songs influencing her song, House of Cards. Carpenter spent a lot of her school years playing piano and guitar and slowly began integrating herself into the folk scene of Washington. However, she had not considered a career in music and instead, after graduating high school, she spent a year traveling around Europe before returning to university to study American civilization in 1980. Her plan after graduation was to find herself a real job, believing that music would not offer her that. But as she spent searching for jobs, she soon found her true calling, music. While she had been playing shows throughout the folk scene, she also made friends with fellow guitarist John Jennings, who encouraged her to perform her own music rather than the covers she had grown accustomed to. Together, they began performing as a duo and recorded a demo which found its way to Columbia Records, where she was offered an audition. Soon, she had a manager and a record deal with Columbia, and her career in music really began. What caught the attention of record label Columbia was her poetic lyrics and soft contralto vocals that would soon entice her listeners too. Carpenter's first record would sit in the country genre, something she was not always so comfortable with, preferring to be ranked as a singer-songwriter. This allowed her to sit in any genre, especially as she took influence from so many categories. Her debut album, released in 1987, would be Hometown Girl, which was produced by her friend, John Jennings. She received traction on local radios, but it wasn't until the label pushed her as a country artist that she really gained momentum. Her release, two years later, State of the Heart, built her fan base one step further, receiving positive reviews, but struggled to gain as much radio play, deeming her songs too gentle and feminine. This led on to the release of her third album, Shooting Straight in the Dark, in 1999, which proved to be the first sign of real success, so much so that her single Down at the Twist and Shout brought her home her first Grammy Award. It landed at number two in the charts and paved the way for her breakthrough album. Come On, Come On was released in 1992 and became a defining moment in her career. This was the beginning of a new direction in her sound. It was still built around folk music, but this time she experimented with honky-tonk and country songs. The album offered hit singles, with seven of them reaching chart success. Come On Come On itself went quadruple platinum and even stayed in the country top 100 list for a staggering 97 weeks. The album created interest with its mix of songwriting skills. Some of the tracks were up-tempo and witty, exploring her country rock sound, whilst others were more introspective, focusing on ballads about social or relational challenges. She even covered a song by her fellow country music star Lucinda Williams, creating a version of Passionate Kisses, reaching number four on the US country chart. This track was an important step in her career, as it became the moment she made headway in mainstream pop and adult contemporary, earning herself a spot on the Billboard Hot 100, while finding a place on number 11 on adult contemporary. The single, He Thinks He'll Keep Her, was acknowledged with a Grammy nomination for Record of the Year. Come On, Come On would go on to sell more than 2 million copies. While writing her own music, she also began writing for others too, such as Joan Baez, Tony Rice and Cindy Lauper. Her next album, Stones in the Road, followed in 1994 and comprised her signature folk sound. Despite her going back to her roots, it was still well received gaining three chart singles and a number one on the Billboard country chart for Shut Up and Kiss Me, which also received a Grammy for Best Female Country Performance. Carpenter continued to write, releasing another album, Place in the World, in 1996, 
stealing the number 20 spot on the top 200 album charts and peaking at number 3 for the country album charts. At the start of a new millennium, she released new music in 2001 after a five-year hiatus. The album was titled Time, Sex, Love and failed to reach the success of its predecessors, gaining only one minor single chart success. Critics felt it was too middle-aged as she explored themes of learning to go through life at your own pace and not always rushing to achieve goals. Her 10th album, Between Here and Gone, was released in 2004 and featured productions from John Jennings again. The melancholy collection of songs reflected on the 2001 September 11 attacks and was inspired by the loss of fellow singer-songwriter Dave Carter. Soon after, she parted ways with Columbia and instead began working with Zoe Records, producing her next record, The Calling, which reached number 10 on the Top Country album charts. It explored contemporary politics and in doing so, sold 100,000 copies in the US. Carpenter continued releasing music, including a Christmas release, along with an orchestral album from her existing material. To celebrate the latter, she performed it in its entirety with the BBC Scottish Symphony Orchestra at the Celtic Connections Festival. Her never-ending ideas and songwriting continued to flow, working on more albums and created a new stripped-back arrangement of a previous work titled Sometimes Just the Sky. More recently, she began the courageous task of recording her next album completely live from the studio floor with her band. This album would form her latest release, her 15th studio album, The Dirt and the Stars, which postponed its release until August 2020 due to COVID-19. Not wanting to let her fans down, she connected to her audience through live stream performances throughout the pandemic, which she named Songs From Home. Mary Chapman Carpenter's music offers a timeless quality, often reflective and introspective. Her fans relate to her poignant lyrical content, whether that's through fast-paced country rock or melancholy folk balance, she continues to inspire upcoming songwriters for years to come. You can check out the Carly of Spotify to listen to the original tracks of the artist. It's a curated playlist with the most popular songs.